warmly welcome to this session, the title of which is This is Embark, a Baroque Idea. This session directs attention to uh, business growth as exposed by and manifested in human activities, in streams of human activities. And um, referring to development as learning and change as a different understanding. Development and change are closely related to each other, but I would like to emphasize the change aspect of development. Is this really working, this microphone? Okay. And I will present to you an interpretive, philosophically based perspective. I will provide some examples, some <coughs> empirical examples, drawing on extensive research material that I have generated. What Bach has to do with this, I also hope to make clear. <laughs> so, growth is a strategy. Here's a description of a strategy of a company named Nepa. It's growing both organically and through acquired growth, that is through acquisitions. The speed of growth has been, you know, the speed of growth has been through several acquisitions. And last Wednesday, Chic Packaging was acquired. Today, 2,000, approximately 2,900 people associated with NEFAB involved in operations in United States, Europe, and, and Asia. They offer packaging solutions in order to provide the customer, the multinational and global customer, with complete packaging solutions to cover the entire logistics chain. And this is, of course, regardless of national boundaries, and in particular, two uh, global customer segments are important, the telecom equipment industry and the automotive industry. In 1923, Sigurd Nogren set up a carpenter shop at his home in Helsingland, manufacturing bread boxes. His eldest son had fell in love with the baker's daughter in the village and the baker needed boxes to put bread in. <laughs> the business grew and evolved into a global corporation as presented in annual reports and on the internet. Uh, as you can see here, the business firm is at the center. The strategy is a strategy of the organization, NEFA. In the strategic management literature, strategy is defined as the scope and direction of the organization over the long term. Strategic decisions are about gaining advantage over competitors, um, the company built on resources and competencies, the so-called <coughs> dynamic capabilities if the company is operating in a turbulent environment. And, uh, but what about human activity? And what about strategy as streams of continuously and inseparable streams of activities? I think we need to pull back the firm level curtain here. And going even further, problematizing the entitative view of firm, looking at the firm as a social reality that emerges through the practitioner's activities and in the telling about the activities. The current state of strategy process research shows little recognition of social reality. Um, a review of 227 studies covering the past two decades present these perspectives. The rational, mechanistic, 
perspective. This outlines, uh, outlines, uh, <laughs> sorry, outlines a sequential and analytic process uh, with the identification of strengths and weaknesses of an organization <coughs> and opportunities and threats in the external environment as if the organization were there and interacting with the environment out there. As if Mr. Environment comes into the organization directing the operations for the organization to adjust to the, uh, the changing environmental conditions. The cognitive perspective sees our strategy as a mental process and reflecting the manager's perceptions and evaluations of a strategy. It's in the mind of the manager. Closely linked to the upper echelon perspective, which also see the, the top <laughs> manager as the key actors of the, the strategy. The middle management perspective, of course, places the middle manager at the center as the key actors because of their vicinity <coughs> to, the, to, to, uh, to the market. The organic perspective looks at the organization, yeah, it describes the development over time using evolutionary and path dependent models, um, drawing on the um, linear view of time with with past, present, and future, linearly arranged in, in this way. <coughs> in recent years, the strategy as practice has emerged, looking into the daily activities of <coughs> practitioners, Describing praxis as the actual activity and practices as the routines of behaviors and values and norms and the practitioners. So here we have three different elements. Uh, according to this perspective, the practitioner first constructs mental, operation, mental representations of the world and then engages in the world. There is a tendency within strategy as practice to make activity a product of instrumental reason and cognitive representation. Forgetting about relationality. This six perspective builds on, build on a being realism. That means that reality pre-exists independent of us and it builds on a linear view of time. Also research that specifically focus on business growth build on a being realism. Um, often taking the firm as the main actor <coughs> using an analytic approach. But firm level data and measuring of uh, correlations between research and variables provide little space for, for a focus on practitioners' activities and of how a context constructs out of practitioners' activities. So we need a perspective that builds on relationality and can capture relationality. From an interpretive perspective, philosophically grounded in, in, in philosophical hermeneutics, practice or business growth practice is realized in social, uh, realized and promoted in social interactions, which refers to the way that practitioners engage and, and communicate with one another. This highlight relationality. <coughs> so re relationality is a key word from the perspective I, I, I present here. So we can look at um, 
strategy as imminent in activity, extending from our existential situation. And this means that every encounter with a practitioner is an encounter with, with the individual's lived experience. Lived experience refers to the way that we are, that world and individual are interrelated. And that we are always situated in a historical cultural past. turn our back on history because we are always situated in a historical culture past. <coughs> and this means that, that we are always confronted with history in a, in a new way from our present situation in, in the light of our present situation in, in the light of our changing present situation we dynamically repeat history, but we also reinterpret history continuously. So this is important to include and consider when we talk about business growth as a strategy process. Accordingly, business or an organization such as a company or a, or a firm is cannot be treated as it were a context, a fixed context, uh, with its own set of properties. The philosophically based interpretive perspective embraces the notions of relationality and lived experience. These are important dimensions in, in this perspective. <coughs> and as opposed to an analytical perspective, my interpretive perspective is as opposed to an analytical perspective. It does not split to the owners and employees and the managers from the business or from business growth. These practitioners actually live business. It's an extension of them. They live business growth. What has Bach to do this, with this? Well, during the Baroque period in the late 17th century, Bach composed a great number of fugues. And fugue literally means flight and um, originates in a theme that is defined as a recognizable melodic line, the principal theme, that can be repeated and varied in the course of the work. So, the drawing inspiration from Bach, well, we can look at activities, practitioners' activities and human activities, dreams of activities in terms of to and fro moments of alternating voices, changing, imitating and answering each other. And all of us, I'm supposed, I think all of us know about conflict-laden interactions and, and power struggles that can occur in organizations so there are many different voices here, arguing and chasing each other and, and uh, announcing their ideas and their uh, opinions. So a few could actually be, be of help here. Let's take a look at some business growth activities um, applying this fugal thinking. Research is a creative process, you know, so we can frame a question differently and make new uh, theoretical connections here. So why not combine fugue theory with strategy and business growth theory? <coughs> uh, based on my research material, 
practitioners' activities are sorted out as themes. Solution providing, box producing, internationalization, globalization, and customizing. The principal theme, the fugal theme, to use this term, is uh, business growth. And it's announced by alternating practitioners' voices uh, that allocate different versions of the principal theme in reference to solution providing, box producing, internationalization, globalization, and customizing. Today, solution providing is at the heart of the operations. The employees, the NEFA people strive to to develop this solution to cover the entire logistics chains of the global company. So this is a theme, an activity theme announced by practitioners, future-oriented, as you can see from that, this description. In the strengthening of solution providing, the theme at the same time turns toward the past. We cannot turn our back on the past, as I pointed out. It's there, because there are voices making themselves heard, telling about how difficult it is to provide these solutions, because they, the competence has been developed in reference to the production of the box. So there is still a wood box seller mentality among some sales forces, as one of the president and heads of a region says. So the box producing theme is called upon and it at the same time proposes a movement and intimates a diminuendo to use another music term which refers to the gradual softening of the voices and the internationalization activities are emphasized. The internationalization theme suggests the past oriented as well as a future oriented movement because people tell, us about, tell about the activities performed in the past. One practitioner says, I was sent to Russia to start up a plywood factory. A local presence had become more important since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. And then he tells about this. Okay. This refers to the past repeated at present. The future-oriented movement of the internationalization theme means that now it becomes more important to, to respond to the customer's new preferences. We define global customer segments and therefore we must cooperate across national boundaries in the global perspective, leaving the international what is going on between nations. So it decelerates and gives way to the globalization theme enforced in crescendo, to use another musical term, and, and for the increase of the voices connected to globalization. So one politician says, the days when a plant's only task was to serve the local <coughs> market are gone. But we connect the local support with a global offering and we can also refer to glocalization, if you want. So, and with globalization in focus, the customer, the global customer becomes even more important here. So the customizing theme is now expressed, and it's both future-oriented and past-oriented. And it's past orientation can be described through this utterance by a practitioner. My first impression as a consultant in NEFAB was that NEFAB was <coughs> extraordinarily customer oriented. Everyone seemed to understand the value of placing the customer in the front seat. So it should also be noted that the activities portrayed by the themes reflect social practice in terms of numerous encounters among the 
managers, employees, and uh, owners. And in these encounters, learning is promoted. Learning is promoted if we are able to widen our horizon, looking behind what is nearby and changing our understanding of a matter. This presupposes a dialogical openness, which means dialogic openness between people. But some people, they give you a speech, or some people, they report without listening and commenting and having open up for this dialogue. So that is important for, for, from the perspective of learning. And it's also dialogical openness to the past. In regard to the past as a communicative partner. As I mentioned before, we cannot turn our back on the past. We are always situated in culture, in historical cultural situation. And we continuously, dynamically repeat this in our current changing situation. We reinterpret the cultural past at present. And we can also talk about a historic future, actually. So, the horizon, as I mentioned, the horizon <coughs> thus refers to the breadth of a perspective a person has and to the situation in which the person is situated. So, this is a summary of what I just underlined here. So learning is the dimension of our interaction <coughs> and refers to our widening of our perspectives and our horizons, if you want. So fugue theory, in combination with strategy theory and business growth theory, could open for a dynamic understanding of business growth as a strategy process. If you would like to go beneath the surface of uh, growth in terms of increases in sales and profits and assets and number of employees and market shares. <coughs> A language of growth description converted to numbers is no more precise than words. Practitioner must be concerned with, uh, with this non-linear non -linear view, non-linear process, process relational view of way of thinking. Because this adds up to a present future past relationality. It doesn't suggest <coughs> what I have pointed out here. It's not based on a linear view of time, but a non-linear process relational way of thinking. And that I think is important that practitioner must, must be concerned about this way of thinking because it, it widens our understanding of what is going on at present. And it directs our intention to what is in between us. I'm not suggested to move from the firm level to the individual level, no. I suggested to move to what goes on in between individuals. Intersubjectively occurring, what is going on in between people. In meetings, in discussions, in negotiations and paying more attention to this is important because these meetings, discussions and negotiations can promote learning and can promote a new understanding of what is going on. <coughs> so strategy process is a multi-directional, <coughs> multi-voice construct. 
and it is concerned with the in-betweens. So the fugue metaphor, or the fugue or fugue thinking, drawing inspiration from Bach and the Baroque period, could help us open up for a dynamic understanding. For last year's words belong to last year's language, and next year's words await another voice, as expressed by T.S. Eliot. <coughs> or you might want to lis listen. of a Baroque idea, or what do you think? Thank you for your attention.